Promotional consideration paid for by the following. Gone are the days of wrestling with our favorite LJN wrestling figures, trying to convince them to stand up. What's a guy to do? I'll tell you what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get on Etsy and look up four left 3D creations and get yourself these amazing custom LJN figure stands. There is a custom stand available for every single one of your LJN wrestling superstar figures. Make your display shine by grabbing these custom LJN stands from four left 3D creations today. Oh, hello, folks. I don't know why the camera has to do this. Do you? Because I don't. I sure don't. All right, it's Jason Epps, New Age Revolution. It's the cave, and it's wrestling with the past. It's Saturday, the day before my favorite day, and a few hours before my favorite evening of the week. I'm excited. Um, we're going to talk about wrestling with the past. Uh, last, uh, yesterday, yesterday, and y'all can, can rag on Liam about this when you see him again. Uh, he, uh, so we had a clogged toilet while I was at work, apparently. We had a clogged toilet, and, uh, nobody informed me that it was clogged. And, uh, I usually come home and unclog it, because I'm dad. And this time, uh, nobody told me all day. They, they forgot. They forgot to tell me. Uh, I come home, we've got to gather up the children to take them to their bowling league, and Liam stops in the toilet for one last exit of his lunch or, and um, proceeds to <clears throat> add uh, flushable wipes to the already clogged toilet, flushes it, and oh my, do we have quite an explosion water everywhere and water started pouring through the basement floor the basement folks the room is in the basement thankfully thankfully the water came through the ceiling in the other room not through the ceiling you know it kind of trickled down i hit the drum set it hit the carpet carpet was soaked i turned off the water in my haste and anxiety, I called a plumber, but we didn't need one, and I got charged 200 bucks for the plumber to do nothing. By the time he got here, the, I had, we had started picking up the mess. The water had stopped. The toilet was fine. I, I plunged it. The toilet was fine. But anyway, long story short, uh, my room has stuff in it that I don't want, like this. Oh, my God. What is that? That's all crap from our basement that uh, has a has a place, but while the basement is drying and being cleaned, uh, we can't put that stuff in there until later tonight or tomorrow. So that's what my room looks like. And I got a problem with that because we're supposed to do a nup all night. And I can only do nup all night on Saturdays. And there's stuff in here that I don't want. So we're going to have to figure out an up all night tonight. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to happen. If this room is is a disaster. Because it's just not fun. It's not It's not the same vibe. It's not the same vibe. So an up all night might be back next Saturday. I'm not sure. It's wrestling with the past right now. It's wrestling with the past. It's TNT. Tuesday Night Titans. 4 85 Which is indeed a Friday. And I think... I think I'm, yeah, I'm, I, I'm in season two of TNT. Um, there's only one more, and I don't think it's a full year. So TNT will be wrapping up in 86. Uh, 4 12 85. Show starts off with uh, Bobby Heenan and Big John Studd as our guests. And, you know, this has been said a, a million times, but Bobby Heenan is. Priceless. Bobby Heenan, I'll tell you right now, I will go on, I will go on a limb here. I will put I will stick my neck out there. You've got Hogan, you got Piper, you got Flair. You got Andre the Giant. I don't know. Bobby Heenan is the greatest professional wrestling personality of all time. Period. In my opinion. Bobby Heenan is is the greatest. Now, per professional wrestling personality, okay? We can't say Bobby Heenan's the best wrestler of all time. But I think you take the whole package. I do. And Bobby Heenan is just so invaluable. Um, 
Uh, they, we, are, we are reminded that the TNT crew is planning something called high T today. High T with the British Bulldogs. Uh, they're going to be having tea that Lord Alfred is going to be hosting. Um, Bobby and, uh, and Big John Stutter are out there, and, and Vince asks Bobby if he's going to stick around for high tea. And without missing a beat, Bobby Heenan says, I don't like anything English. And Lord Alfred Hayes is just sitting right next to him. And Bobby just has a stone face. Vince, Vince just looks over at Alfred. Alfred, ah! And Bobby is so quick. So quick. Because there's no way. There's no way that Vince was like, okay, Bobby, I'm going to ask you if you like high tea. And you say you don't like anything. No, 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 no. Bobby Heenan just responds perfectly with the, with the best, the best presentation. Um, Big John Stud is still carrying around the dirty, filthy bag of Andre hair. And I, I gotta, I gotta, I don't know, man. Where, what are our thoughts on that? Is it, is it Andre's hair? I mean, they did collect that. Is it Andre's hair in that bag a year later? Is it? You know, are they, are they carrying around the big smelly bag of hair? Or is it just, you know, black fuzz, whatever? Do did, did they, did they really keep track of the bag of hair from city to city? Is Stud, does Stud have it on his dining room table when he goes home and he's got, oh, I got to get to TNT today. Stud wife, give me the, give me the hair. Give me the bag of hair. I don't know. I don't know. And then, as I've said before, where did it go? Where did it go? Was there one point where they just said, look, uh, let's lose the hair. Let's toss it. Give me, give me it. Let's toss it. Did they toss it in like the break room garbage can? Andre's hair? Did Andre get his hair back? Did Stud give Andre the bag? Now, there you go. I don't, I don't know. I wonder about those things. So they're talking about WrestleMania, obviously. And, and again, as we've talked about before, the bad guys in 1985, the wrestling logic rationale in 1985 was the bad guys, it, it didn't happen. So Bobby Heenan is literally saying it didn't happen. Big John Studd was not slammed. In fact, Big John Studd is so fast in that ring, it just looked like he was slammed because he was moving around so quickly, looked like he was slammed. Andre did not beat Big John Studd. And then Heenan says, I have proof. And he shows a clip of WrestleMania. And all he shows is Andre throwing out the money. And he goes, see, never slammed. Never slammed. <laughs> Heenan's got a bit of a perm here. And I know that there was a period of time when he had curlier hair. So I don't know if he's, he's got the perm here or not. Uh, again, bad guy logic is so good. You know, Andre was Andre did not slam stud. And Heenan says, have you seen Andre? Where is he? He's retired. He didn't slam him and he retired. Andre's retired. That's what Heenan says. How can you argue with that? Uh, Bobby Heenan at the end of the spot also gets into it with Lord Alfred Hayes for whatever reason. I don't know. But they just keep going back and forth with each other. It's it's just so good. Um, Moondog Spot is next. And he's brought out by Mr. Fuji. Which I don't, I don't recall Fuji ever becoming Spot's official manager. Um, no Moondog Rex, and they point out that Rex is um, Mr. Fuji was not pleased with Rex, and so he sent him to the Louisiana swamps for more training. So uh, Moondog Rex is in the swamp training. That's Mr. Fuji's training regimen. Uh, Alfred is, is disgusted with the smell of spot. And Fuji says that that's Louisiana swamp cologne that Moondog Spot is, is holding, is wearing. And Moondog Spot always sits there with the bone and he nibbles on the bone and then he scratches his head with the bone. It's hilarious. Um, Fuji says, uh, that, that Rex is training in the swamps with Paramus, Paramus. Paramus. And Vince says, I beg your pardon? Paramus? Yes, Paramus. Piranhas. But Fuji's pronouncing them Paramus. And then he says, alligators and snakies. And then Vince says, oh, snakies too. And at one point, Moondog Spot breaks up a little bit. He cracks a smile when Vince says, snakies. And that was great. I love this stuff. I think, I think TNT is an opportunity to just see these guys from a totally different angle. 
and just see them ad libbed. I mean, I think that I think that uh, TNT is so um, off the cuff. I do, and and you see some guys shine, and then you see some guys that just can't do it. You know, they can't just flow. Um, Fuji, uh, Vince says, and and what is what is that bone uh, made of, uh, Mr. Fuji? And Fuji says, ah, I don't know. Uh, could be human, could be large animal. We don't know what the bone is made of. Then we go to Moon Dogs and tag team action. This is from Canada. This is from uh, All Star Wrestling. It's old because Angelo Mosca is still commentating, and I get a little shaky and a little little jittery when Angelo Mosca's voice is on. But TNT just shows really old highlights, you know. Um, and, it, and it just reminds you how much I like the Moon Dogs. I just I really like the Moon Dogs. I think they're such a good tag team. And so, so at the end of this, they come back from the match. Uh, Vince says, uh, tell me, Mr. Fuji, uh, does, uh, does Moondog Spot, uh, speak? You know, we'd like, we'd like to hear him speak. And then, uh, Fuji says, ah, uh, speak, Moondog. And then the Moondog barks. Moondog Spot barks just like a, a, like a goofball trying to bark like a dog. So he, he barked. And then they go to commercial. And I wondered how much, like, cracking up, because these are all just frat boys, you know, with poopy humor and, and fart humor and just, you know, booby humor. And they're all just a bunch of knuckleheads. Can you imagine how much they just lose it in between segments here? Just cracking up when they go to commercial. I, I can't imagine how much fun uh, TNT was for all these guys. Uh, the British Bulldogs are next. Uh, Rex, uh, sorry, Spot and Fuji uh, stay. They slide down the couch a little bit, uh, like the Tonight Show. And uh, the British Bulldogs are next. They are certainly taking the WWF by storm. And uh, they uh, so Dynamite and Davy Boy talking. Davy Boy looks so young, so baby faced. Uh, Dynamite's always been a little gnarly looking, you know. But they 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 say that they've been together seven years. Uh, they talk about their cohesiveness and their, their speed. Uh, the dogs are going insane upstairs because another child has come over, so we'll have to ride that out a minute. Uh, we go to uh, championship wrestling just from a few weeks ago. British Bulldogs versus Matt Bourne and AJ Petruzzi. Uh, high T is coming, and the Bulldogs will be featured. Uh, so they once again remind us about high T. The Bulldogs give their opinion on how they would do against uh, Sheik and Volkov, and they feel like they would they would certainly confuse them with their speed and then attack when Sheik and Volkov are, are confused. So that is how they would defeat Sheik and Volkov. We go to a commercial, we come back with high tea, folks. We're at the uh, we're at another set, kind of a living room set. Uh, with uh, with tea a tea table set up and couches and the bulldogs are there with Vince and and uh, Moon Dog Spot and Mr Fuji are sitting there and and uh, Lord Alfred uh, introduces Stewart who is a butler and who will be assisting and Stewart has this I don't know this traditional English butler outfit if there if there is such a thing and he's you know standing there proper and and um, He's 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 great. He doesn't miss a beat. He's I don't know who he is. I think he's legitimately British. He sounds he sounds British. It doesn't sound fake. And he's just good. He's he's just spot on. Um, Al Alfred tells us about the tea and the snacks and you know the crumpets that they're going to have and the Scotch egg that they're going to have and and then he starts talking about the secret to a good tea and uh, he's explaining the pastries and Vince does his. Hilarious snoring in the background because he he fell asleep. Alfred bored him to sleep, and Alfred really is b boring. I mean, and I don't mean it like not the character. I don't think he has like good time awareness, and and he just he goes on and on and on about the tea. When I don't think they would have moved at that slow of a pace. Like Alfred's really slow. Like he has no idea that you know they that, you know they got they got some time to. You know, you got to be on time. Um, the moon dog gets up and steals some cookies. Uh, he, he gets chastised by uh, by Alfred, and Stewart is disgusted with the moon. I've never seen anything like this. And Alfred, oh, he's flea bitten. And um, 
<laughs> it's just good. It's it's so bad, and 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 then good, and then all of a sudden everything's going fine. Everybody's served, and then Mr. Fuji just loses it. Mr. Fuji just gets really angry because the tea is not Japanese tea, and there's nothing better than Japanese tea. And and Moon Dog has the cup of tea, and he's just got his whole mouth in it, and he's lapping it up, and it's dripping off of his beard. And Alfred is disgusted. Ah. Oh! Ah, oh, ah, oh. and 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 Stewart is, ah, oh, I've never, and McMahon's mad at Spot, and then and the Fuji's really upset. Not Japanese tea. You said this was the best tea in the world. It's not Japanese tea, and then for some reason he smashes a, a plate over Moondog Spot's head. Alfred is furious because of how expensive this china was, and then ja so he's calling it china, and then Mr. Fuji's mad because it's not Japanese china. It's English China. So that triggers Moondog Spot to get up and just start smashing everything. Smashing his bone all over the table. Everybody's freaking out. The cookies are going. Vince's like, get out of here. Get it. Get out. And, then, and, that's, and that's that. So then that, that skit is over. Then we have uh, interesting. We close it out with Pat Patterson. Pat Patterson is the guest. And he comes out and he uh, he just says he just loves loves the way Lord Alfred talks. I just love the way he sounds. Oh, thank you. And uh, you can just tell that Pat Patterson is, is just in. You know, he's just in the circle. You can just tell that, he, that he's just part of the, the boys club. Uh, you, you can just tell. Uh, that he's that he's you know close with Vince. It just seems like they they're you know, uh, but basically Pat Patterson is here to talk about his role at WrestleMania, and how he was a referee, how difficult it was to manage everybody in the ring, and he's you know how difficult it was to keep Muhammad Ali from attacking Roddy Piper and everything. It was great. Uh, we get a little bit of footage of WrestleMania, the main event with Pat Patterson. No big deal. Uh, Pat Patterson says, you know, I've I've been all over the place, Vince. Uh, I've, you know, been uh, up and down the road. I've, I've, I've seen and and done it all in wrestling. And then McMahon goes, "I'll bet." And you know, now now that you know these things about these people, uh, you just can't help but just enjoy. You know, I'll bet you have Pat. Uh, then we got we got weird footage of Pat Patterson taking on um, Cowboy Bob Orton from St. Louis. You know, the wrestling at the Chase, the short. Uh, short-lived WWF uh, event, show, whatever it was. It was better than a, not as good as a house show, but better than a Saturday morning show, Wrestling at the Chase. And you got uh, you got Patterson versus Orton. And, and in a rare thing, the guy on, the, you know, the match being featured on TNT, uh, Patterson loses. So then, you know, Patterson has to say, well, you know, people can get the best of you anytime, and he, he got the best of me this time. You know, next time I'll you know, get a nice go behind and really take him down. It's actually a great match between Patterson and, and, um, and Orton because it's, a, it, again, it's a TV match, but they're given so much time. All right, uh, so that's that. That's, that's the show. That's the show. Uh, TNT. I, I still want to review these because I just think they're comic relief and it's just a different look at these guys and I like looking at it and I like picking up the things so that I can talk about it with you. So uh, we'll be back. Um, so what is that? Four, what did I say that was? 4-12? Um, yeah, 4-12. So then we have 4-13 Championship Wrestling and 4-13 All-Star. The Peacock Network doesn't have the next episode of TNT, which would have featured Dr. Jerry Graham, according to Vince. And then the one after that, Peacock picks up again, and it has the Unsung Heroes episode, which is all the job guys, and it's fantastic. So I can't wait to talk about that. I'm going to go into my discs and see if I actually have... It's actually episode 15 of, of like, season two. So I'm going to see if I have it. If I have it, I'll talk about it. If not, then I don't have it. And it's I don't know why it's not included on Peacock. But we might be doing the Unsung Heroes next. And Vince just had this idea of doing three job guys at a time come out. And so it's like Mario Mancini, Steve Lombardi, and Salvatore Belomo just sitting together talking. And then three bad jobbers come out. Rusty Brooks is fantastic. Uh, it's good. It's good. So we'll, um, 
we'll do that next. That's all. That is all. I I wanted to talk about the gift that came the other day. Ah, uh, it's so good. And it's on my shelf now, and they're just cataloged perfectly. I can't believe it. Um, but I can't. I don't think I'm good at tonight because of this room. So we might end up having to do, you know, do it tomorrow. I got a, I got a new magazine that came. It is a, it is an old one. It is a, it's an 84 slash 85. That should tell you what it is right there. Um, and it's just so cool. You know, it's such a good magazine. I don't really have any questions for the power hour. I do want to talk about my office. Um, and somebody asked about memories of 90s and 2000s wrestling figures. So I will do that, actually. Um, maybe I'll do the power hour, talk about my office situation, and talk about 90s and 2000s experience with wrestling figures. And I did play with them. There's a shock. I was an adult. I was an adult playing with wrestling figures. I'll maybe tell you that story. Classic superstars, that whole deal. Hasbro's we can talk about. So yeah, I'll probably show off the item that came yesterday or the day before, and then I'll do Power Hour with the uh, with with a couple topics. All right, that is all. We will see you all tomorrow. Good night. Now.